<laughs> I think a lot of people are definitely missing what I like to call the tie bracket, if you will. But uh, yeah, you can absolutely get there with a 603, but you definitely want to just lock it up as fast as possible. I want to talk about uh, the decks that we're going to be seeing, Jeremy, because uh, we're seeing Lost Zone Pult. And I personally thought that this deck had a lot of spice. It had some showing at NAIC, but then a lot of people were like, nope, uh, we're not going to look at Dragapult uh, in Lost Box. It's you can just play Dragapult and Reggie Drago. Yeah. But no, nah, we're done with it. But we are going to be seeing Aaron on 5 0 with this Lost Zone Pult. Yeah, and of course, Alex Shamansky uh, is playing Roaring Mooney X, but it's not just Roaring Mooney X. It is Roaring Mooney X with Darkrai Vsar and Dusnor. So a lot of stuff going on in this list, but you got my favorite combo of an engine in Pokestop, Night Stretcher, Rare Candy. Uh, it is always a great when you're being able to draw three cards with your stadium every turn. Uh, so maybe we can see some action there. And to speak on the, the Lost Zone kind of engine uh, that we see Aaron here playing, uh, it, it kind of fell by the wayside for Worlds. Yeah. Uh, Kiram came out <laughs> from yeah. Shrouded Fables. And when it's easily slotted into the best deck of the format, you kind of see those goals and experiments go back in the binder, but Aaron's proving everyone wrong today. It's still a great deck and starting off pretty well. Yeah, I was about to say, as if you're playing Lost Box, you can't ask for anything more than a Buddy Buddy Poffin on your turn one. You're able to go on ahead and grab those comfies. We definitely need them. Or even in a Lost Zone Dragapult style of a deck, uh, we have a uh, Dreepy that we also need to grab, but we're going to check on over into those prizes. Now, Jeremy, I don't know about you, but I hate to see two Mirage Gates when we definitely want to be swinging with Dragapult prize. Yeah, uh, the, the thing about a deck like this Lost Zone uh, Dragapult, you're not playing a lot of supporters. You're playing your four Colorus' Experiment as well, uh, and having a Colorus and an Iono in there, there's not really going to be uh, much kind of leeway, along with the Countercatcher and Sableye. That's a lot. That's Six bad prize cards, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, for Alex, does have a 101 Dust Nor in there, along with that Pheasantipity EX, which was your pick for uh, <laughs> one of the cards this weekend. It's probably going to be in most every deck. Uh, just being able to draw three cards after your opponent takes a knockout and Iono's you to two, uh, <laughs> it's always going to be good. I said it in the lounge, and I'll say it again on the desk. It's just one of the best cards that we've seen printed. There's just no more power you can ask for than drawing three after a knockout, right? Uh, but nevertheless, we are going to go on ahead, find our double nest ball. So we do have two comfies and two dreepies. Uh, I think this is a really great start. Now, granted, this is turn one, so we cannot go on ahead and call Riz here. But I do believe we might just have a pass at this point. Just let Cramorant go. That is very awkward, if so. Oh, no, it looks like Alex started oh. first oh. when Duskull passed. Yikes. We haven't seen that since, what, Nationals 2012? <laughs> Could be a very fast game one here, Jeremy. Especially, I think, what's really cool is about a Dracloak on the bench. Uh, I believe its old uh, ability name was called Airmail, where you're able to look at two cards, put one in the hand, and then put the other one just on the bottom of the deck. Uh, but we are looking for what we like to call a turn two donk here as we take on over into game number two. Honestly, sometimes these TCG games go fast. It's a card game. It naturally sometimes takes a while. But honestly, when it's like this, it could be very scary. Yeah, uh, I actually prefer Recon Directive over Airmail. Uh, it's just a better name, I think. Uh, <laughs> but so Aaron starting us off with that turn one, got the double nest ball, uh, buddy buddy poppin'. Going over to Alex Shemansky, who just does go past. Uh, you hate to see it. And now we are going to get things going with that chorus. You got the flower selecting, needing one more flower selecting to be able to just turn on that Cramorant to be able to take the knockout and game one. Yeah, absolutely. Has the Prime Catcher in hand, but the thing is the Prime Catcher doesn't actually work here because the first part of the card says that you need to switch your opponent's Pokemon to the bench first. But we do have a Switch card here, and as long as we find one more Switch, we could go on ahead and just see that spit innocently for a nefarious game number one. Oh, the pass back! Oh, no. All right. Well, we got some form of hope in Pokestop. Going to find a Night Stretcher and Earthen Vessel. Uh, this is an awkward hand for sure for Alex here. Honestly, I'm not really seeing much that we can even do. I mean, we, we can Night Stretcher back more <laughs> Echo at yeah. this point, 
right so we can actually have somewhat of a game give us some time alex gonna go on ahead and start just seeing what we can do to shuffle up this deck and maybe get you know a brand new set of cards off this book is off even alex is shaking his head he just cannot believe it uh, listen, before winning EUIC, Alex has had a lot of bad luck on stream <laughs> games. Uh, never been the best friend, uh, the camera, for Alex here. And yeah, there's the nice stretcher for Rimpeko, just to not lose next turn. But that, that, that is going to turn on the Prime Catcher if Aaron chooses to use it. My whole thing is, if, if we're going to prime, we might as well just wait, right? The Dusk Goal, actually, is what we're really kind of looking for here. Uh, that is going to lead into our Dusk, dusk Lobs and our uh, Dusk Noor. But see what we are going to be able to do. So far, so good, honestly. We're going to get find two Dracloaks here. Uh, no struggle just yet. We are going to just start off with that Chloris' experiment. Look at the top five here. Got a... Uh, consider, Jeremy, we did see a Mirage Gate, so we are going to hold those into the hand. We're already at six there. I do believe we also saw a Dragapult, too, so we could potentially see a game-ending turn here. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's even a rescue board found off that uh, Pumpei, but I think everything is cobbled together in the hand quite nicely here. You got that Mirage Gate, get the Fire and the Psychic for that Dragapult EX, the Prime Catcher, and the Duskull only has 60 HP. This is going to be fireworks for this first game here, and just like that, Aaron takes it, and we're going to move on to a game two. Honestly, a heartbreaking game for Alex Chance, <laughs> gave you you didn't see it, but it will be uh, Aaron that does take game number one. Honestly, that also could have been over a little bit faster, too. Uh, Alex even had a whole nother turn to try and set up, but the most Alex could have done was grab that more Pekko with Night Stretcher. Definitely not the showing that he wants to see here, but honestly, it goes to show the power that Lost Zone Pulp does have with that Mirage Gate, right? We're used to seeing things like Radiant Charizard and Sableye, and I believe that Lost Zone Pulp also just plays both, so you have tons of attackers, even a 300 plus HP Pokemon to deal with, too. And looking at Alex's list, uh, there was a lot of outs to do stuff. Uh, a simple Nest Ball or Ultra Ball opens it up to something like Squawkabilly EX on that first turn, Minion B, uh, and just not having any of that available. Uh, only a, a pretty thin count of supporters as well. You got three research, and that's really the main goal that Alex is trying to reach towards. Uh, interesting deck from him here for this weekend, and really cool to see him start out 5-0, and oh, but it's definitely not the kind of showing you want. Yeah, absolutely. I think for a lot of people, they expected some sort of Roaring Moon coming into the weekend, whether it be Ancient Box or even Big Roaring Moon too. Uh, but I really like Alex's creativity with the Darkrai being able to get back uh, the two items from the discard with the V-Star ability, Star Abyss. So I'm excited to see what exactly Alex has in store. He will be able to probably go first on this one. I did see a Nest Ball in hand, so I think we're going to be doing a lot better. But there's that Dark Rye V. Maybe we'll see it a little bit more. Trekking Shoes is a pretty nice card in a deck that plays heavy Pokestop just because it helps you kind of reach that extra step that you're trying to dig for. Uh, and discarding two Dusnor, it seems like, uh, but going to be able to grab that Squawkability EX. So good on the first turn. Yeah, honestly, it's the only time you really want to see Squawkability EX is really kind of on the first turn, or what I'd like to say it becomes a Earthen Vessel or Ultra Ball food, if you will. Uh, but we're definitely looking a lot better. Got to look over at the prize cards. Nothing too detrimental I see in there. The second Dark Cry V uh, being in the prizes, but it's at the bottom right now. Uh, Having a Sada at the top, I think, is okay. And the Night Stretcher, but Pokestop here, too, uh, could also be a big factor. But as of right now, nothing too crazy. But there goes another Night Stretcher and a very key card, I think, in this deck, which is going to be that Dark Patch. Yeah, especially with that Sada in the prize cards. Uh, there's only one in the deck for the two Roaring Moon EX that are available for Alex. But uh, you can reuse it with stuff like Palpad. Not really going to have access to that this turn or this game at least, uh, and Pokestop oh. only gets to draw one card here off that <laughs> Ultra Ball, discarding a Roxanne and another Pokestop. 
Well, if we have Palpad, not too bad to drop some of our supporters, but we are going to grab a Nest Ball right now, see what we can go on ahead and find. We're thinking about the second Dust Goal here. Definitely not a bad idea. I did also see a Radiant Greninja, I believe, in the deck list and in the deck too. So I don't know if we want to keep kind of throwing out those energies into the discard so we can use Dark Patch. Uh, but honestly, at this point, I think Alex is definitely going to be able to play a game of Pokemon here. Yeah, especially with the nature of Aaron's deck, where you're kind of taking the first couple turns to get set up. You want to get those Dracloaks in play. You want to build up your Lost Zone with Flower Selecting and Colossus Experiment. Usually it takes a couple turns to do that. So Alex's main goal here is get some energy in the discard for your Dark Patches, be able to get energy in play just so you can apply pressure and then eventually you can take two prizes in a turn with Dusnor, and uh, then you start to get things going even further. You can build up kind of uh, a, a good board to where Dragon Bolt's not that scary. Well, there's a ton of Pokemon in this hand, Jeremy. And honestly, we get to just kind of uh, keep it and pass on over potentially, but we have tons of options here. So it is going to be the pass. Let's see how Aaron is going to be able to try and lock up this set. 2-0, Nest Ball coming down, probably going to be grabbing one of those Comfies, but we are going to be able to go on in and see what is missing from this deck. And I have to say, Jeremy, Buddy Buddy Poppin being missing in a Lost Box deck, not your favorite thing to see. Hey, you got four of those. You know, you might be able to find them still, but that one of Prime Catcher hiding along with that Chloris experiment at the top it's going to be a little bit rough. That Suey and Heavy Ball usually is your chance to maybe shuffle around the prize a little bit. That's that's gone. <laughs> it's in there. But by the time you grab the Comfy, which is on the bottom, uh, you just don't even need that anymore. So Colrus is going to come down. We're going to try and see some more Buddy Buddy Poffins. And like you said, Jeremy, there it is. But see, considering tossing away the Mirage Gate and the Iono here. So I like how we are just going to go on ahead and I think, honestly, have a good game of Pokemon at this point. Have Buddy Buddy Poffin in hand, and I think there is a Switch card and a Rescue Board, so we are going to be able to see a couple Flower Selects as well. Now, it really is going to depend if Aaron's going to be able to finish this turn with uh, Spit Innocently from Cramorant. It's going to maybe force another Pokemon Search or a Switch out in hand. We could just see a, a good setup turn with getting four in the Lost Zone, trying to build up for that inevitable Mirage Gate next turn. But Alex not getting a uh, dark energy on that active dark rye means you kind of have a little bit more to play with, right? You can kind of take things a little bit slower than normal. Yeah, absolutely. You have a little bit of time here, too. I definitely think Aaron's deck is working, though. You got three Dreepies on the bench. You are going to go on ahead and Pokey Stop here. So it is going to be the gate, the bundle, and the switch card. You cannot ask for anything more than just grabbing that switch card, even before you go on ahead and flower select, so you don't have to consider throwing it away. But what a what a flower select. It's either it's either Dreepy or Comfy. And honestly, we have enough Dreepy on the bench, so we are going to just see the Comfy grab. But there is Rescue Board. Uh, subtracts from the retreat cost, but thanks to Comfy's retreat, it's only one. So you get to retreat for free here. See our second flower selecting. And it's between that Dracloak and Super Rod, and we are going to prioritize the Dracloak. Yeah, that's the, the biggest thing with playing a deck like uh, this Lost Zone Dragapult is anytime you're just playing Lost Zone in general, you, you really have to value your resources uh, kind of perfectly and manage them throughout the game. Uh, you lose this Super Rod and Iono and a Mirage Gate early, you're going to play differently later on in the game because of that. Yeah, absolutely. Get the Evolve into that Dark Cry V-Star here as Alex is going to hit the stop again, losing the Dusk Goal and the basic Dark Energy. And as we mentioned before, losing the Dark Energy isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world. We do play the items that can help get that out, uh, like Night Stretcher and that Dark Patch. But here comes the Concealed cards. It will be Nest Ball and the Petrunt EX with its Subjugating Chains ability. Yeah, this hand is very awkward for Alex. Still just a bunch of Pokemon like you were saying last turn. He found a few more. Uh, <laughs> it has some Pokemon search with that Nest Ball, Ultra Ball it seems like. Uh, going to discard a couple of resources here in that Petrant EX, but again, it's not good right now. I don't think it's going to be that good even late in the game. 
Yeah, honestly, subjugating chains allows for you to move the dark Pokemon into the active from the bench. It does get poisoned, though, on the way, so you do have to be a little bit careful of that. See what our Ultra Ball search is going to give us here as we are considering anything that will help us, honestly, just start seeing some items here, Jeremy. Yeah, I think we're going to see the Luminion V hit the bench, use that Luminous Sign to go and grab a supporter. Uh, because Alex definitely needs some help. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Honestly, it's just it just doesn't seem like the the deck is really agreeing with him right now. Hence, a very very uh, diligent shuffle, if you will, is going to see the research. So we might as well see a lot more cards here. So we are going to just completely uh, ditch the hand here. It is going to be the uh, energy attached though. But like we said, we are going to get rid of that Petron. The Nest Ball and the Iron Bundle here, but here we go. Definitely looking like a lot better of a hand, if you ask me. Double Dark Patch, Rare Candy, two Rare Candies, I believe, and an Earthen Vessel. Uh, yeah, it's it's a little bit better, but uh, you're going to have to lose a lot of resources if you want to get a Dusnor in play. Uh, and even if you do, you're not really going to be able to attack. Uh, the only card that really helped Alex out here in this situation for this turn was going to be that uh, Prime Catcher. Not finding it here means the Dark Rise is just not going to be able to attack. You got a couple Dark Patches in hand, but that Roaring Moon takes three to attack for both of them. So another slow turn here from Alex. Yeah, a lot of decisions to make here. Has to decide whether we want to go on ahead and just set up, but it is just going to be a pass. Has a little bit of a bench to work with, but I can only imagine with old already four in the law zone here. Here comes both direct cloaks here. Get to use that recon directive ability. And we get to see a lot of cards in this deck, right? We have flower selecting where we get to see the top two. We get uh, recon directive where we also get to see the top two. But I like your point there, Jeremy. You have to make sure that you're conserving enough resources with your flower selectings because sometimes you don't realize how much you're actually pitching away. That you can't get back. Yeah, uh, there's specific numbers you need to hit for a deck that plays this Lost Zone engine, and it's four for the Cramorant, seven for the Mirage Gate, 10 for that Sableye. Essentially, once you get there, you're good. Uh, and it, it, it's definitely tempting a lot of the times just because drawing cards is so fun in the Pokemon TCG. <laughs> uh, Recon Directive, Flower Selecting, Colors' Experiment, the hand is uh, eventually gonna be overwhelming. Yeah, I like the sequencing here, too, uh, using the flower selectings before your recon directive. But let's see what we're going to get. We're going to grab countercatcher and a psychic energy, I believe. I don't think we need countercatcher just yet. We are going to pull it here, see what our second one gives us. A quick flash in the hand. And it is going to be potentially the switch card. I like taking the switch card here. You always want to make sure you can just keep moving your Pokemon around. Now, it seems like there is no Colrus's Experiment played just yet. I don't know if Aaron has it, so we're going to have to go to a third Comfey here just to get to that seven in the Lost Zone. So, and so different from what we were kind of seeing earlier with just no uh, Pokemon on the bench. Now we have fill, fill, full the benches excuse me, on both sides here. We'll see what is going to go on. But like you said, Jeremy, seven in the Lost Zone. Yeah, that means just another switch out paired with this Mirage Gate and a Dragapult EX in hand. And Aaron's going to be the first one to actually start attacking and trying to put the pressure on what seems like a very fast deck for Alex in the sense of taking big knockouts early. Yeah, absolutely. And it's super important, too, because once again, we're trying to just get rid of these Duskulls here. Uh, we haven't seen Dark Ride star attack either so it is going to be the evolve or was that this turn yeah I, I think either that's what players are gonna go with he might have done it to the one that just evolved this turn yeah just evolved both of them so cannot yeah. evolve into the dragapult ex uh, i don't know if you want to Dragon Headbutt for 70 damage here. <laughs> Not exactly uh, your favorite line, but honestly, if I am Aaron, that could be a huge misplay because that definitely, one, takes down a Mirage Gate. I do believe there's another one already in the Lost Zone as well, but I think for Alex, that could be a potential par target. Yeah, there was access to Rare Candy from Aaron. There's two in the list to maybe evolve that Dreepy on the bench, but just the pass of the turn, this is exactly what Alex needs. 
Now, granted, both of the Dusnor that Alex plays are in the discard, so those rare candies aren't really going to help him too much in hand unless he finds a Night Stretcher. Granted, there is four in the list. I think two are already in the discard. Still two in the deck, and I do believe we still have Pokestop, so we do have resources uh, to get there as well. But you have to look at it. Alex's deck already down so much, and I think that's the big thing with a lot of our uh, Dark-type decks is that they go through themselves super, super quickly, right? We're just throttling and throttling, trying to find these resources as fast as possible. Thankfully, Dark Ride V-Star does do its best drag, uh, um, Reggie uh, Drago V-Star impression with that Star Abyss. Uh, being able to get back item cards from the discard, but Pokestop finding a Night Stretcher here, uh, we could see a pretty good turn. Also can just grab a Dark Energy to attach to the active and attack. You have that in hand anyway. Yeah, right. Things are things are looking pretty good. Alex definitely needed that one turn uh, just to kind of get back into this, but like you said, Rare Candy in hand. Second attach here. We have barely even seen uh, Professor Sada's Vitality uh, coming out from this deck, but there's actually only one of them in there, so it is going to be Dusknor there. Cursed Blast is just going to go on ahead and take care of the Dracloak, and once again, a huge punish and a misplay on uh, using that Mirage Gate a little too early. Yeah, I mean, you're doing so many actions in a turn with Flower Selecting, Recon Directive. It, it, it's definitely a lot to keep track of. Uh, this Dusknor proving its worth in Alex's deck, though, being able to just take a prize right here, especially in a matchup where early game you're going to be taking a lot of single prize knockouts uh, on these come phase on Dreepies. So being able to kind of keep up with the prize race is always great. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, if Alex is able to just keep going and uh, play super well, I definitely don't see too much of an issue. But we go, going to be able to get those two prizes, finds the Dark Rai V and the prizes as well, as Aaron is going to go on ahead and just check the loss zone before we go on ahead and make any potentially game-breaking decisions. Yeah, and one thing to note, too, is when you're playing against a deck like Lost Zone, you're not really going to expect too much disruption from your opponent. They want to build a big hand as fast as possible and then just keep it the entire game. Now, Aaron is playing one copy of Iono, but it was one of the first cards sent to the Lost Zone this game. So Alex doesn't really need to worry about his hand getting disrupted too much. And uh, you can play the game better knowing that. Yeah, absolutely. Second flower selecting here. It is going to be the rare candy and the super rod right now. We're going to pitch the candy here. So we have nine, I believe, in the Lost Zone, if I do math correctly in my head. But to just be checking out the discard as well. But definitely feels better, I think, for both players that they're definitely playing a better game right now. Is it math if you just have to read the number nine? Listen, like <laughs> sometimes that's really hard. You'd be surprised. <laughs> we'll see what's going in the Lost Zone here off of this Colrus's experiment. To believe it is a Pokegear 3.0 and a Nest Ball. It seems like we have practically just everything we need, but there's that golden number 10 here in the Lost Zone. So Sableye's Lost Mine also now turned on ready to go. Yeah, uh, technically 11, but we, we reach that 10. After it, it doesn't matter, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the number will just stay at 10 at that point. <laughs> <laughs> and Recon Directive here, uh, just again, building that hand, but we know there's that Dragapult EX because Aaron tried to play it down last turn. <laughs> but finally, hits the board, and you can start threatening that Phantom Dive. Uh, something like that Prime Catcher would be great here, but again, it's in the prize cards. Uh, not going to have access to that. Is going to have to just eye down this Dark Rai V-Star. Aaron does have a boss's orders in hand, but again, already played that Colors' experiment. Yeah, absolutely. I do have a question for you, Jeremy. I do believe in Aaron's hand, I do see a Temple of Sinnoh. Would it be worth playing the Temple of Sinnoh down to just get rid of Alex's resources at that point? Um, instead, just kind of like throwing out just Alex's opportunity of getting any more items that he needs. Exactly. Ooh. Well, it actually works out perfectly here for Aaron because Pokestop discarded one of the Pokestops earlier on in the turns, and then Alex has another one prized. So even though Temple of Sinnoh doesn't do anything in this matchup because both players are just playing basic energies, uh, getting rid of that resource for Alex where the deck is built around discarding the top three cards because you play so many items. Yeah, absolutely. So... We will be seeing also the counter catcher on to Luminion. And like we were talking about, uh, 
Phantom Dive is now going to go on ahead and spread damage across the board. So that damage can go basically anywhere on that bench. Uh, a lot of the times players opt to go for the Squawk ability, but even though uh, we already have game with that, with Phantom Dive, we can also just throw all six of it onto that Dark Cry V-Star if we so choose. And I do believe, what, it was the counter catcher that was actually played, which is yes, the same here. Yep. Uh, being able to take a two prize knockout and set up that Roaring Moon so it really can't frenzy gouging yep. uh, is going to be huge. It's the one way to take down a 320 HP Pokemon on your opponent's side for just three energy. And it's going to make Alex have to do a lot more work to try to get a knockout this turn. Alex definitely needs to kind of take his time because I think this will definitely be uh, the turn of dreams, if you will. It's a three prize turn uh, for Aaron there. I mean, uh, the thing is now you are on an odd prize trade, so that could be a little bit more awkward, but we definitely have the Roaring Moon in hand. We have Dark Patch. Uh, there are options we can go for here. I'm interested to see what Alex's line is going to be. Yeah, it has Ultra Ball in hand. You have access to that Star Abyss V-Star ability from that Dark Cry V-Star, so you can reuse a couple items. Maybe going to be Dark Patches again. Just try to get as much dark uh, energy in play to boost your Dark Pulse. Alex with, I believe, six cards left yeah. in deck at this point. <laughs> um, I do believe uh, we got rid of our one copy of Roxanne a little bit ago, too. That would also be a nice way to replenish the deck. I know a lot of the times players kind of go for that Iono, but Roxanne also, now that Aaron is all down to three prize cards, we'll see, though. Alex shaking his head. He's definitely not liking his odds on this one. Yeah, has access to Palpad in the deck, but again, no poke stop, no way to actually dig for it. Second Roaring Moon going to hit the bench and thinking about it here. You just have to be really careful. Definitely don't want to just like go all the way through, but double Dark Patch there. Uh, definitely cleaning up to be a really nice turn for Alex, but like I said, it, it could be very difficult. We get the Dragapult out of here, right? But then Radiant Charizard is already staring you down in the face. Yeah, you're still needing to take two two prize knockouts, essentially, to try to win the game, where Radiant Charizard does its best at the end of the game, needing only a couple energies or even one energy to be able to take these knockouts and clean up 250 damage with Combustion Blast. Uh, it's definitely going to be on Alex's radar. There's also the possibility of just another Dragapult EX getting played. Uh, Phantom Dive taking out this... Uh, Roaring Moon EX with just 30 left if Frenzy Gouging is the play. Uh, it's not looking good for Alex. Yeah, definitely not, right? There's, there's too many what-ifs in that uh, scenario here. So I do believe we are going to V-Star ability, that Star Abyss like we talked about. And when you Star Abyss, you can put two item cards from your discard pile back into your hand. So like you said, Jeremy, just basically a different version of Legacy Star that we see from Reggie Drago V-Star. But I do believe I saw a Dark Patch and a Night Stretcher. But here we go. There it is, that Petra Run EX. We were talking about the subjugated chains a little bit earlier. So we will will be seeing at least a frenzy gouging this turn, but the question is, what does Alex do after? Yeah, well, we're going to have to get there when we get there. At least now we can frenzy gouging for the one-hit knockout on this Dragapult EX and just force Aaron to again have it. But right now, you'd love to see the pal pad for the Roxanne, be able to maybe poke a gear for or uh, trekking shoes into it or something like that, but none of that's available. Uh, just doing what you can with the cards that have been dealt to you. It's very interesting the routes that uh, we could go at this point, but is going to be comfy now going back into the active with that rescue board. We have tons of cards in the hands, and that's what you love to see as Lost Box, but Aaron being very diligent, checking out what is already in that discard. I think at this point, right, it could just be a swing with the Radiant Charizard. I don't know how I feel about uh, just going on ahead and just evolving once more, unless we can find a way to find uh, like Boss onto Squawk, and then we can go on ahead and Phantom Dive and take a beautiful four prize turn uh, from both Boring Moons. It could be practically anything, but I mean, you got to talk about it. That Prime Catcher still in the prizes, and I like how we just used the Hisuian Heavy Ball to check that out. So now we have to find it all natural, and that's just lo looking a little bit tough. Yeah, uh, 
the Hisuian heavy ball shuffled the prizes. Prime Catcher still ended up at the top. <laughs> uh, it does not want to come out to play this game, too. But Aaron is set up very well to be able to try to couple together uh, closing this game out either this turn or the next uh, just relies on how many resources are available and left to him. Uh, that is the name of the game for Lhasa. Yeah, I don't even think the recon directive right now, if it really matters what exactly we're taking here, we're just trying to find a way to get the evolve and the most amount of cards we can see as possible. But like we said, thanks to Rescue Board, we do have that free retreat. Going into Flower Selecting, see what's going on here. I mean, we have a very thin deck of Sableye and Cramorant. Well, oh, okay, wait, this is a play, Jeremy. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, Sableye, with its Lost Mine, is able to spread around 12 damage counters to your opponent's side of the field. That is a pretty easy knockout on the Roaring Moon. And since it is poisoned, it only has 20 left. So you just need one investment to that active. And then you can spread 11 to the bench. It is just short of knocking out that Radiant Greninja, which would be game and match. But able to super rot a couple energies here. This is looking pretty nice for Aaron. I think one of the things that I really like about this deck, Jeremy, is that it goes from a two prize deck to a one prize card deck in a matter of seconds, right? So it really does kind of uh, make your prize mapping for this just a little bit weird, right? Because Alex has the right idea. We just got to get those uh, Dragapult EXs out of the game. But then you have something like Sableye to come in and play cleanup. So we are going to be seeing uh, Lost Mine become active. Trying to decide where exactly it's going to go. Like we said, uh, thanks to poison damage, this Roaring Moon is going to go down this turn. Yeah, uh, there's ways you can kind of split this up to where you can guarantee that Radiant Charizard uh, takes the knockout everywhere. But I think it's already guaranteed with that two on the Dark Rye V-Star. So putting all of it remaining on that Radiant Greninja actually missed out on one damage counter. Could have... Uh, waited for Poison to take the knockout on the active Roaring Moon, but it doesn't really matter. It's semantics by this point. Yeah, I was about to say, it seems just, uh, it seems like a really difficult uh, checkmate at this point, though. We are going to bump the Temple of Sinnoh with Pokestop. See what Pokestop is going to bring us. There's the Palpad and the Night Stretcher and the Nest Ball. You love to see a beautiful three-item hit, but the question is, Jeremy, is it a little too late for that? Uh, it, it seems so. I, I, there's a route where... Because there's so many cards in Aaron's hand, you can maybe pal pad back that Roxanne, somehow find it with concealed cards, play the Roxanne, hope your opponent does not draw into a way to get Sableye back or just get Dragapult EX with a couple energies. We'll have to see how Alex feels about it. Uh, does look like Night Stretcher for the Luminion V star here. So this is going to be able to fetch that Roxanne right away. See what's going to happen here. Going to Palpad back in the boss and the Roxanne. So, like we said, Luminion, that Luminous Sign ability, you're able to go on ahead and grab any supporter from that deck that you like. Nest Ball, though, is going to be the play just to check out what's going on in there. And I think that's what we like to call thinning the deck just to make sure we don't draw into anything we don't want to here. But it will be the Luminous Sign for Roxanne going to see a very small cut. Both of these decks are down to some of their just last cards. They've really gone through everything at this point. We're going to see a dark energy on the Petrant EX, which is actually a pretty viable attacker the later the game goes. Uh, this matchup, it's not really going to matter too much, but it's something that people have to keep an eye out for. Shuffling up here. So Roxanne is going to give Alex six cards, and then it is going to give Aaron only too, but honestly, thanks to that Super Rod, if we get this Sableye out this turn, uh, we could just see that Fire Energy go right onto Radiant Zard. But honestly, Alex, this, or Jeremy, this looks like the same, well, practically the same hand for Alex Shemansky. Has the Research, has the uh, has the Prime Catcher still. We'll see, though, if we make it to next turn. There's the draw for turn. All we really need is uh, all we really need is Ooh. a Colrus' Experiment. My goodness, we're going to see a lot of cards this turn. All right, we see the Psychic Energy Go the wayside to the Lost Zone. You do have Mirage Gate. If there is the fire, there you go. Retreat and Combustion Blast for the knockout. And just like that, Aaron Osuna with Lost Zone Dragapult EX moves to 6-0, one match away from making day two 
trying to best his 65th at Sacramento last season. I was about to say, what an amazing achievement here. To do it also with a deck that a lot of people have just counted out as well. I think a lot of people were just saying Lost Zone Pult isn't real. And we've seen uh, when it really gets going, how it really does kind of change your prize mapping and the way that you go about certain matchups. But what a set, I think, from both Alex and Aaron. They put on a great show, but would have loved to see a little bit more from Alex. But you know, I do get to see some match highlights here as we're going to go on ahead, check the replays of what is going on. Just what an interesting start. You can know, you know what, Alex, I feel that. <laughs> that that head nod was like, oh man, what do I do? Yeah, uh, highlights, maybe low lights <laughs> for uh, fans of Darkrai V-Star. Uh, this was a pretty quick game one. A prime catcher sealed the deal with that double knockout. And then going into game two, Alex just could not find an energy turn one. That meant he couldn't attack turn two. And it was just a little bit too slow. It allowed Aaron to really build up that loss zone. And when loss zone has 10 or more, uh, it, it is scary. Yeah, absolutely. And I think just from how many turns we saw Alex just not have the energy to really go on ahead. It really just gave Aaron and that loss zone time to really kind of stabilize at that point. Because, you know, when you're not really seeing too many cards in the loss zone on turn one, that could be a little bit rattling. But great composure from Aaron. Uh, we'll definitely be still seeing Alex. Five and one is still a very respectful record, but loss zone pulled six and oh here at Baltimore Regionals. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely crazy. And Stabilize back. Uh, I, maybe we just have to say it now. It, <laughs> it might be the only Lost Zone uh, Dragapult EX in the room, but Aaron is showing that it is still viable. And if your opponent can't cure him, uh, you, you don't have to worry about playing your Colors experiments. Yeah, still a little thumbs up to the crowd as well. What a great showing of what decks have been just flying underneath the radar here at Baltimore. It's just. Obviously, I think we could have just predicted, like, yes, Reggie Drago V Star is going to be here, but Lost Zone Pult? <laughs> 5 0? Now 6 0? You know what? You got it. Honestly, a really great uh, match. I am just a very big, also, Roaring Moon believer, both big and baby, if you will.